respected Mr. Srivastav, respected Mr. Jain, my colleagues on Dias, Director of Finance, Director of Power, former Directress of Power, my friend from ILFS, and all my dear friends, two ladies, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> A very good evening to you. And uh, let me tell you in the beginning that I feel honored to share the dais with Mr. Srivastav and Mr. Jain, who I will not say happened, who are my mentors. I pay my regards to them. In the years I was growing up while working in NTPC, I got a lot of inspiration and guidance from both of them. I know they are not only excellent power professionals, experts in their field, though he laid down his office as director of power, Mr. Srivastava was known for his own name excellence. He was looking after operations as senior superintendent, if I remember when I was working there in NTPC Korba. And I had the opportunity to work with Mr. Jain uh, there at Bindhyachal. He was heading the technical services. And now, of course, the consultant with us, because I know he is one of the great persons in power engineering. So we have two doyens here who are expert in their domain. And one more credit goes to, uh, I mean, uh, should always remain perhaps with him, because so far I don't think in 500 megawatt this record has been broken. As the head of the project of Simadri, he brought the unit, 500 megawatt unit, in 48 months, huh? 39 months, 39 months. And that too was a greenfield project. And here in fact in NLC, though we have tightened our belts and uh, doing much better these days, the project management has been one of our weak areas. All our projects, be it Bershingsha, be it uh, TPS2 expansion, that we suffered from time overrun. Cost overrun I will not mention, because time overrun itself. And now also TPS2 expansion, though we could commission after a long delay last year, Still, we are struggling with the stabilization process. And I'm happy no, to note that uh, Bursing Sir has stabilized, continuously running with uh, 250 megawatt plus, 100% capacity. I congratulate Mr. Vamindran, Director Power, and the team. And coming to TPS2 expansion, Mr. Shankaran told us, don't worry, we'll bring it up and naturally he is doing, doing his best. And yesterday at uh, 7.57 p.m. when I was there with the minister, I think that time our total generation was 3.851 megawatt total against 4.301 installed capacity. Uh, forget the 10 megawatt solar and uh, uh, this uh, 51 megawatt uh, wind-based generation. And uh, now we are, of course, uh, we have commissioned around 37 megawatt over that. If you keep that aside, so including in TPL, we were touching the generation figure of uh, 3851. I was very happy because I was always telling that power, we should always uh, remain above 3500. And this will be a good day when we touch the 4000 figure. So maybe 4000 figure is not a dream anymore, we'll achieve. And now, of course, because of some restriction is there, I think one unit also is uh, down perhaps. No? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, now it is, uh, as per the last information available with me, it is 3,603 uh, megawatt or something like that. So good going, but at the same time, when yesterday through my message I shared with you the concerns, one is the 
concern which are very specific to us. Another is the concern emerging out of the environment, out of the competition, out of the market scenario, out of the regulatory uh, uh, guidelines coming in. Now perhaps uh, attaining the efficiency parameters, it is no more optional sort of thing for us. Earlier we used to uh, try to improve the heat rate, the oxygen consumption. Perhaps we were doing it on our own. But now for every five year period, in respect of each and every unit, CRC is giving the guidelines. The 14 to 19 guideline, if you go through, there you know how much you should achieve. And if you don't achieve, then you are uh, doing a sort of uh, thing which will put you to under recovery. And now also in respect of many of our units, uh, under recovery completely we have not been able to eliminate. And if we talk in terms of uh, uh, the efficiency part, yes, we have got the technical expertise and efficiency, but at the same time, some new things perhaps has to be thought of because last year, in a very hard way, we realized when on pre-Diwali day, that was November 9th perhaps if I remember, when we got drowned because of the torrential rain and our mines got flooded, that time we realized even if we have pitted power stations, then without the food coming from the mine, we cannot run even a single day. And also we are crippled by the low supply of uh, fuel, I mean uh, fuel oil. So that basically uh, made me realize, I said but the next day when I reached the field along with the right of power and right of mines, that even if you are having pitted power stations, you cannot live in a situation where the hand-to-mouth situation has to be there always. So maybe we'll have to build up a buffer stock there at the mine end, fully covered, not to be wet. At the same time, in each power station, we should have at least three to four days stock available. That this year I have told our people to do it. They're covering it up and before the onset of the monsoon, because here we have the monsoon, uh, now it will be coming, uh, going up to December and beyond. So during that period, we hope that perhaps this could have been one of the points, I mean, which uh, should engage our mind. It is our problem here, one. Second, the problem we are facing now due to the market constraints. Wind power, now in this area at least, is uh, doing good. And uh, we are suffering from a power surrender. Though we have PPAs with the discounts, though we have the PPAs with uh, ACBs, where we get full fixed cost recovery. But at the same time, when the power surrender takes place, I lose the opportunity of operating beyond 85% and there I lose my incentive, one. Second, if I always feel, in fact, I remember on one of the occasions, Mr. Rajgopal is not here, when last time the TPS1, sorry, TPS2 expansion unit one, uh, no, unit two, was getting commissioned, there I told perhaps it is time for us to think in terms of trading. And that time I was confronted with one question, Will the discounts agree when they pay for your full power? I mean, this over the fixed charge. Then I had to tell, look, as per the Gargill formula allocation, it is uh, the 85% perhaps is the PPA and beyond that, 15% is the unallocated quota. Unallocated quota as a matter of practice and a convention is being given to the same users, but I always can take a chance at least to deal and trade with that power. And now the same thing I pushed through and we could do it and so far we have lost 622 million units which has impacted our revenue by around 182 crores. Out of that through trading, thanks to my friends in the power side, the trading side and uh, the commercial side, something around 15 crores we have salvaged because this trading, we could start late one, and the percentage of trading is not that much, because we, uh, we find 
that normally in the hours between 00 hours to uh, 6 a.m., sometimes the power price in the exchange is going uh, below 2 rupees, and we cannot sell that. We have so far benchmarked a price, something around 240. If I remember, 225, though, we wanted to go to uh, that. So these are the new things which are happening, one in the market scenario, and that, that also points out to one thing, that you have to be very competitive, what our director power was, my finance was telling, that we have to be cost competitive. In fact, yesterday in my message also I said the, to be a cost leader and for that, not only the operational efficiency, the predictive quality management, I mean, so far as the maintenance aspects are concerned, and then uh, we have to have the low cost fuel, and when fuel comes from a long distance, the landed cost of the fuel goes up because we have a plan to go for a 4,000 megawatt power station in Chikali, for which we have been allotted Talavera 2 and 3 mine blocks with a 20.5 million ton. With uh, uh, our NTPL running at full swing, full uh, uh, capacity of 1,000 megawatt, we'll be requiring 5 million tons for that, and rest is meant for Chikali. But what we find, if we transport, transport the coal by rail and road, 425 kilometers from there, and by sea route to a place where no jetty is there, we may have to construct a jetty also, the landed cost of the fuel will push up my price uh, for unit of tariff, I mean the tariff per unit, by something around 85 paisa. So whether it will be economically viable, though we have the PPA, I'm asking now, the dish comes, please uh, validate, because it should not happen that tomorrow in the market where merit order generation will count as a high cost power producer, my power should not be dumped. So those sort of things we'll have to now keep in mind. And the second thing what Sri Vatsasa was telling, uh, apart from the regulators, regulators are becoming strict and uh, they would not allow you to pass through your inefficiency, inefficiency in uh, generation process or maintaining the efficiency parameters where we are lax, they will not allow uh, a pass-through to affect the customers or the consumers. But there also, what we find, now the new norm coming, the FGD and DNOX will have to put in existing power stations. And now as for the new norms, we'll have to add capacity only to supercritical boilers. The second phase of expansion for our TPS2 uh, that we earlier planned for 500 megawatt conventional boiler, but now we are going for 660 megawatt supercritical boilers. And specifically, <laughs> and specifically we are thinking in terms of ultra supercritical 800 megawatt boilers. So these are the areas, and in fact, as I uh, shared with you earlier uh, with our own people over here, uh, in our aim to add capacity, we have to go through a very competitive mode and project management has to be excellent, one. And the time overrun we should not allow. And let me tell you, perhaps we have the company, I mean one company where this time we got the PIB clearance for that our 2000 megawatt, rather it is 1980, 660 super into three, units coming up uh, near Kanpur and Ghatampur, that we got the PIB clearance and we were, re we were ready parallelly in seven days' time, we placed the awards for main plant, SG and TG both. <laughs> so we are picking up, we are catching up, and I know a lot of uh, expertise we have, only thing is perhaps somebody will have to tell you, like, like the Hanuman used to be told, or the Bhimi used to be told, look, you have got tremendous potential. So here is a reminder for you, you can do and deliver. So maybe you will have to awake, accept the challenge, and deliver, and you are delivered.